name's Kathleen and I work in the Bozeman Public Library in the Children's Department and I'm here today to teach you how to do a craft. We're going to learn how to make our very own wrapping paper. I thought with Christmas coming we could make some Christmas themed wrapping paper or you can just learn how to make your own stamps and do whatever you want. Maybe you can make Christmas cards or just have fun stamping. I love stamping. This is something I made this morning. You can see a little bit of a pattern and I made a little stamp with my name and I'll teach you how to do this today. It's really easy and there's so many things we can make with it. You can pick up the craft kits at the library. Um, we're doing curbside delivery on book orders. So you can call us, order some books and say, can you add on one of those stamping kits and we'll throw it together and then you can come pick it up curbside. So come with me today and let's go have some fun. So even before we get started, I just wanna quickly show you the cool stuff you can make with this stamping technique I'm gonna show you. <clears throat> you can see that you can just make all sorts of different shapes, something simple, something more complex, maybe something like this that's a little more elegant, and then you could make something really playful like these stars and dots. And it's so incredibly easy to do. I think all ages can participate in this and I hope children and adults will like it. All right, let's get started on how this works. So most of you have seen stamps before, I imagine. Rubber stamps, this is one of my favorites. It's a, it's a circus zebra. And how it works is it's just got a rubber picture and you stamp it up and then you push down and there's the stamp. Pretty simple, right? So we're gonna create something that is like that not quite as detailed, not quite as um, specific, but what we're gonna do is make something more like this. So this is a star I've made on a cork, and I'll show you how beautiful it comes out. That one little tip was lost, so I rolled it a little bit. Didn't quite line up, but that's okay. There's some beautiful stars there anyhow. So I'm gonna show you how I made this, and then what's in your kit, and then we'll just um, explore some ideas. So this is the sticky back foam that you'll get in your kit, and you'll know it's the sticky because it's got the adhesive on the back. And so all I'm gonna do is draw a really simple star on the back. It's easier to draw on the, the back, and don't draw too hard because it will go through and make marks on your foam, which will show up in your print. So real gently, just make your little sketch, or you can just um, cut it out freehand and not draw it. Some people like to do it that way too. So I'm just gonna quickly cut that little star out and then attach it to your foam core. That's either the black or white thicker foam that's um, very sturdy in your kit. Later in the video, I'll show you how to cut it out. I just used this block because I had it and wanted to show you really quickly how much fun and how easy it is to make these stamps. So now we're gonna move on to making the trees. Now I sped this up because who wants to sit and watch so slowly? So um, I cut, uh, drew my tree, I cut it out. Anything you want, you don't have to make a tree. But you'll see it's a good idea to measure. You wanna make sure that your stamp fits fully on this foam core. Make sure, make sure you get an adult though with this part, so difficult. So here's that tree I cut out and now I'm doing kind of this angled cutting. You can see those are all triangles. It's kind of like a tangram puzzle, putting it back together. It took me a little while, but I got it done and that'll make it look like it has a ribbon going zigzag down the tree. You can do this or not, whatever you like, it's all up to you. So I got it to fit nicely, um, made sure it's all sitting on that foam core so we get a nice even print, lining up my pieces and adhering them down with that nice sticky back. And then once I have everything stuck down, we're gonna move on to cutting it out. I have found that cutting it out makes um, a cleaner print on the edges. And in just a second, I'll show you why I do that. Um, you learn as you go with this process. Okay, so we're back to our star paper. We've got our, um, our uh, tree, and we're going to start inking it up. Of course, you can use your paint. You can use markers and just ink up the, um, 
sticky part or the yellow, the sticky back foam part, and then just go crazy stamping. You can see that I made three prints off of just one stamping on the ink pad. Those um, second and third prints are called ghost prints, and I think they're just as fun. I think adding different shades of a color make it look more real, more three-dimensional. I think what I'm going for here is maybe a forest of Christmas trees and just stamping. You can imagine what this might look like on a full piece of wrapping paper that you were making for somebody. And I would guess the white paper would probably be the best for this kind of color combination. But of course it's up to you and your kit has three different colors of paper for you to try. So have fun with that. I switched to a deeper color green just to add even more dimension and more variety. And I love how this is looking. I love the overlapping and the different layers this print looks like it has. So now I'm gonna show you how to put those little red decorations on here. And all I did was take a pencil with my eraser and dipped it in my red ink and stamped those little junctions where it kind of turns the corner. Um, finish up with some of my stars and it looks gorgeous. Wanted to show you um, how the paint works as well. This is another stamp I made and I just took my paint and brushed it on. This is a little name stamp I made. You can see the difference of the paint versus the ink and we'll see more of that later. So here is a few more ideas. This is just like a forest of trees I made. That is with the paint. And you can see I've got another set of trees and there's my little palette. I'm just coloring it up with my paintbrush. And sometimes on these groupings, you can't cut them out separately um, if you want them to be nicely grouped together. But you'll see, um, I'm gonna clean off the plate or the stamp with a baby wipe. And then I thought, hmm, let's do some variation in color. Let's put a little red on our tree. Let's do a green tree and a white tree just to make it fun. And this time we're using the brown paper. So you can see it has a different look. And um, I'll show you in a little bit how to make those little um, pine needle-y kind of looking things in the paint. Um, here's a little star I made with some snowflakes. You'll see that this one, you can see how the paint is kind of thick there. The second print looks a little better. So it's just a game of playing around with the consistency of your paint, trying it out and realizing that this isn't gonna be a perfectly printed wrapping paper that you would buy at the store. It's gonna be one of a kind, original, and it's gonna look that way, and people will appreciate that so much. So here's another design I came up with. That is going to be a, crisp, a string of Christmas lights. So I cut out each little piece to make those little sockets where you screw in the little light bulbs. And then I took this block and I cut out, well, first I sketched up four light bulbs. And the reason I'm doing four is because I'm gonna be doing four different colors. And if I was to um, just have one light bulb stamp, it'd be a lot of um, washing off that little light bulb to get it clean for the next color. So I thought I'll just do four and then I can just have one for each of my colors because it took less time to make the stamp than it would to clean that baby off. So I'm cutting out the light bulbs here and I'm going to adhere them to a little children's block I bought at the second hand store. I got a big bag of these blocks for like a dollar and they work wonderfully for smaller stamps. Um, you can kind of get creative with what you mount your stamps to other than the foam core that's included in your kit. So here I'm going to sticky them on and I make sure that the bottom of that socket lines up with the bottom of the block so that when I stamp it onto my electrical cord, it fits in that little electric socket. So you'll see sometimes I'm trimming it so the light bulb fits fully on the block. If not, where there's no block, it won't press down hard enough so you won't get the tip of the light bulb. So I've got my little palette out of a paper plate and I am just gonna ink up red. And look at that, I'm gonna do all my reds, ink it up again making sure it fits in that socket. When you try to line something up with printmaking, it's called the registration. So you see I missed a little on that one, but that's okay. So add a little yellow on my palette, and then I'm gonna finish with those colors. 
and I thought this would be a neat thing to have across your wrapping paper for some lucky person to get. Now let's move on to making texture on your stamps. So I'm just gonna make a small circle, cut it out, and then I'm gonna grab my pencil and start making a texture on the top of it. Be careful because even your fingernail will make a mark on this. So I just took a pencil and um, you can use dull or sharp. Doesn't It depends on what size you want your line to be. So grabbing my pencil and then I'm gonna make some circles within circles. So I just make that firm circle there and then I'm gonna go around. And now if I just left it like that, it would be a finer line, but the more I go around it, the thicker it will be and the more crisp it will be in your print. So that's looking pretty good and um, finish that up. And then I've got a larger version of this that I'll show you how to stamp. So once we're done with our design on the top, we just mount it on the foam core, trim it, and we're ready to stamp. Here is a larger version of that yellow stamp, and I'm just kind of modeling again how I made it. You can see the center. I really did a lot of work with my pencil. Here's another one I made with some cross hatching. You can see on the right-hand side that this is what it looks like printed, and there's a different side that has a little bit different uh, patterning. So you can really have fun and makes a lot of details in your prints. Now I'm going to show you how to um, paint up your stamp. That's just the white paint with a paintbrush. And then push hard and go crazy. Have fun making all sorts of different patterns if you like. I also have that yellow and black stamp I showed you earlier that has the different um, fine detail in it. And you can see my hand got printed from the other side. But it's all about just having fun. Who wouldn't want to get this lovely wrapping paper that was handmade and designed by you? So then I added some green. You'll want to um, clean off your stamp before you put on a new color or it'll get muddy. I use those baby wipes, which works really well. Or you can always use, there's that baby wipe, um, a wet paper towel. But the baby wipes really have a great texture for this. So here I wanted to show you that tree again. You'll notice how the white paint is getting all over the background. It makes for kind of a sloppy print. You'll see here as I go that it looks okay there, but then I pushed too hard and I made those marks. So the remedy for that is to simply cut it out. So I'm showing those again. <laughs> we just grab our scissors and cut it out. Don't let your scissors touch the foam uh, stamp part or it'll it'll show a mark but marks are kind of fun too the nice thing about making art is nobody knows your mistakes you made just you so here we are now i just painted it up again making kind of making a row when i think about um, wrapping paper it kind of has a a row of things you can always look online um, just google christmas wrapping paper and get some ideas too and so then I'm just gonna add um, a little yellow star at the top. So I just put a little bit of yellow on my palette, paint it on, and the, up, up on the top, I did a little bit on scratch paper to see what the consistency was. And um, then I just went for it. And you can see it changes. And sometimes you can get two or three prints off of one painting. Now here's a little snowflake stamp I made, and I just used the inner, um, leftovers that I had from stamping a really tiny, or excuse me, for cutting a really tiny circle with a hole punch. I put those on the bottom of a cork to make some snowflakes. Now I just want to show you really quickly the difference of what a painted stamp looks like versus one that has been inked up on a um, stamping pad. You can see it's a little bit finer. It's a little bit um, cleaner. And some people like the rustic look on the right and some like the cleaner look on the left. It's totally up to you. You can also try inking up your plate with a marker, just kind of color in the stamp part. So there is that. I give you a little close up there so you can see the difference a little more. Now we're gonna move into the same uh, stamps but on a different color paper. So in your kit, you'll get three different colors of paper and it, you can t see that it makes a really different look depending on what kind of paper you use for your background. So you can have a lot of fun playing around with that too. So this one I use the stamp pad and that's a green stamp pad and you'll notice 
I can get about two stamps um, after each inking. And the second one is called a ghost print. And so I like the way it makes different colors, um, a little bit lighter shade, looks more natural. You can make it look like a forest that way. Um, I wasn't really crazy about how the yellow in this ink pad turned out, so I decided to switch it to red, and I think I like that much better. You could even just stamp right over that if you didn't like the one that looks kind of muddy. So here's that snowflake stamp again. I make sure to kind of twist it so the pattern changes up as we go. That always makes it look a little more handmade. And you saw this on the previous um, time when I had the little ornaments for the tree. So it makes such a lovely little circle. It's so much fun to play with the little circle of the eraser or any shape you want to make. And again, there's that name stamp. I might have mentioned that any lettering you do, you have to write backwards. So be careful about that. And then finally, I just wanted to show you how much practicing and playing around I did before I really made any actual wrapping paper. I just played with different colors, different stamps on different backgrounds of paper. So just have fun with it, find something you like, and go for it. I promise this is the last thing. Here's the kits, and I'll explain just a little what's in each one. Here we go. I just wanted to show you what's in your kit. You can call and request at the children's desk at 582-2404. So your stamping kit will come in a little bag like this. You'll have three colors of paper to play with, a white, a red, and a brown. And then there'll be a little instruction sheet. Um, I'm kind of more of a content sheet what's in there. And you really should watch the video before you do this. It's kind of, you know, has some, some intricacies. This is the foam core, or not, excuse me, this is the self-adhesive foam. You'll know it because it has the sticker back on it. And then this is the foam core. So this is what will be the back of your stamp, and this will be the front. So I find it easiest to, um, you know, draw my design, cut it out, stick it on, and then cut it out from the foam core. And then we have a little bit of paint. So I just did red, green, and yellow in this little cups. Um, test the consistency before you stamp this onto your um, paper because it's kind of thick you might need to add a little water but just play around with it on scrap paper before you actually start your finished wrapping paper and then when you're out of this you can use anything at home you can use paint markers can be um, you can marker up the, um, the foam stamp you can use stamping pads with ink um, you can get really creative so there's that, so give us a call. Can't wait to get these in your hands, and I hope you'll send us some photos of the paper you created, or you can just leave a comment in our Facebook page post of this video. Thanks so much.